Hey YouTubers, uh, this is another little video I'm going to do on the uh, staging area here on the Muskoka Central. Um, I wanted to do some more work on the layout, so but before I did that, um, I have to get rid of all the rolling stock that I have sitting on the upper shelf. And uh, I thought I'd do a, a nice staging area. Um, it's going to be an 8-track staging area. It's going to come in from the main layout here. Uh, that's going to be one access to the layout and then it's going to be going out um, this area over here and the two tracks are going to feed in along the uh, this wall here then that tracks going to curve onto this shelf and it's going to continue along the wall and turn around in the back corner over there in total it's going to be 16 feet long with uh, eight tracks, uh, eight storage tracks plus the two mains uh, coming through the middle. Okay, so now that I've defined the space that I wanted to put the staging yard, um, I put some ideas on paper using my program. Um, I use CAD rail and uh, I took all the measurements and defined the room area and came up with a with a plan. Um, basically, you can you can see it here. It has um, a curved track, uh, four staging tracks uh, that are curved coming in from the one side uh, of the layout and then this side up here has another four long staging tracks and then there's a reverse loop that goes around the end and the last item is a uh, double crossover in the center on the two mains. So shown here is one of the pieces of plywood that uh, I used three quarter inch plywood and I started tracing out as you can see with the lines there um, I used uh, extensive use of this piece of plywood it's a template that I cut out it's got a, a 28 inch radius on the inside and a 30 and a quarter inch radius on the outside um, and that's the the two main radiuses I use for the main line and uh, so I make extensive use of that sort of template and traced, uh, traced out everything on the uh, plywood itself and then cut it to size to uh, fit the main lines. Then I started laying the track on the actual plywood. And you can see this is one of the, the middle sections. I did it in three sections. So I did everything offline in the garage here. So the other thing I did once I um, refined the final plan was to number all of the turnouts and actually number the staging tracks because my plan is to automate the staging yard um, using some block detection and some switch aids and an NCE uh, mini panel so that um, I can automate um, the the four staging tracks back here and, and plus the two mains um, I'll be able to automatically choose the route and run trains in order so once I had all the numbers down then I came back out to the garage and I started doing all of the wiring I flipped over the boards okay this is this is the main main yard you can see I have the four automated tracks and the double crossover they're all mounted and I put uh, all my feeder wires off of the tracks made sure every section had a feeder wire coming down off of it and one other thing I did was you know actually wrote on the I don't know if you can see it there but there's an R that I wrote on the on the roadbed and there was a G to signify green on the top side so that when I was uh, dropping the feeders, I always had the red wire on the outside and the green wire on the inside. And then, um, so I fed that those through, and actually the orange wires are for the crossovers um, or any reverse loops. So I, I make uh, make sure you stay consistent with your um, color coding. So once you decide on something, uh, try not to deviate from it um, so that when you go back to it later on, you always 
know what wires what. So my color scheme is uh, red and green for the two uh, main um, DCC feeders and orange is always for uh, reverse loops and <clears throat> even some I had uh, some black feeder wires coming off but I color coded those with um, some electrical tape. I had a spool of red and a spool of orange and a spool of uh, green and I color code those so that uh, I know what they're for. Now some other things I did uh, when wiring um, some of the tips that are off here. Now I used a frog juicer to um, power all of my frogs. That's it there so it has the two wires uh, coming in and then it can uh, this one's powering four separate frogs and then I've used outputs five and six. Uh, I've, I've paired them. It has a little jumper on board here and you can pair those for a reverse loop. So um, because my double crossover actually makes it um, uh, the reverse loop uh, and I had to somehow or power that with a reversing unit so I used the frog juicer as uh, my reverser. And what else I also I've done is I plan to bring everything back to a main panel um, where I'll um, have all of the tortoise motors um, and all the block detection will be coming into one main panel. So <clears throat> what I did was, um, and, and I have five wires coming off of each tortoise. Um, I bring wires off of terminals one, two, three, four, and number eight and I'm going to feed those all back to the main panel. Now I may not use all of those, I may only use the one and the eight, um, but I'm bringing back five wires from every one just in case I need some other detection or I want to run um, some uh, small signals or something off of, uh, off of the tortoises themselves. Um, then I have the, the wiring already there and I don't have to go fishing back underneath the layout after the fact. So, um, you see uh, offline I, I wired, uh, or I soldered in five wires to each tortoise and then I'm bringing all of the tortoises into um, some sort of distribution panel or, um, you know, a little distribution block. Now I've used two different uh, kinds of distribution blocks here. There's the, there's the standard ones um, that I got at the electrical store. Um, or I did some homemade ones here uh, using a, a number six uh, M6 uh, one inch bolt and um, uh, some nuts uh, and uh, some wire connectors. Um, I like these little hook wire connectors. Um, they just go around around the bolt and then I put those on there. Now these are great in areas where you're bringing in several wires like uh, this area here where this is the main green and red feeder but um, you know I've connected in one, two, three, four, five wires into this one block and it was very simple just to put another connector on there and another nut and um, away I went. I didn't have to try splicing a bunch of different wires together or or running a, a jumpers between the, the distribution panel. I just uh, kept uh, stacking them onto the one bolt and uh, connected them up that way. So um, it, was, uh, it was a bit more work, of course, to, to make this kind of uh, panel, but um, you know, in, in some areas it was easier where you're bringing in multiple wires. Um, I probably didn't need to do it so much off of the tortoises. Um, this would have sufficed because it's just uh, in a lot of cases it's just one wire in and one out. So in this panel here I brought in two tortoises. Uh, they're going off um, 10 positions on this distribution block here and then I've I bought some uh, 10 strand, 22 gauge uh, 10 strand uh, wire and uh, I always keep the same sequence. I wrote this down on my plan. Um, same sequence 1 to 10 and I run that back. Uh, they're going to be gathered up. You can see I've made one big harness and they're going to go into the the main distribution panel. Now what else I've done is each one of these wires I've taken um, this 
uh, box of labels. Okay, it's just a bunch of numbered labels. And I peel those off and I go back to my plan and on that wire I have turnout uh, 311 and 371 are the two turnouts that are on this um, strand. So I can bring this into my main distribution panel and I know what exactly what wires those are and I'll label up my uh, panel um, after the fact. So and some of the other and those are the the BD20s. Um, same thing. I'm running um, four wires from each of the BD20s. You only need uh, actually probably two, but um, I have the extra two wires there in case I want to run some LEDs uh, to a to my panel switch panel or something and show what's uh, detected. So. That's basically it. On this board here, I have um, over 224 uh, wire terminations. On this one panel, I have um, nine, nine tortoises. And this tortoise here, I have running, running two sides of the uh, double crossover. So instead of using two, I used one and then a little bit of a gearing system there. But um, yeah, so it was much easier to do it on the bench uh, this way, upside down, rather than trying to duck, uh, you know, do it upside down and and uh, uh, kneeling underneath the the bench after the fact uh, to do all this wiring. It was uh, much quicker to do it this way. Um, wire ties. Um, this is the wire tie that I was using originally. It's one of these rings. You can get them in all different sizes. But then I found uh, these guys here. Um, it just takes a number number eight screw. I have some uh, uh, five eighths inch number eight screws, and you put those wherever you want them, and then you run a cable tie through them, and they'll accept any size cable tie. So those turned out to be much easier to use than. Uh, than the various different size loops. Also, um, instead of using the one inch number six bolts, they also make these things call um, hanger bolts. Um, you could just thread this into the uh, to your plywood directly and then um, I'll probably use these under the layout uh, where I just need one or two wires to s sort of act as a terminal. Um, I got these from Lee Valley uh, tools, so they make them uh, small enough. These are actually number eight, so they didn't uh, they didn't have number sixes available, but I used number eight ones. So, and the the, the number six um, connectors uh, will still fit on there. They're just a little bit snug. Um, also, I have a lot of these uh, European blocks and. I didn't like them as much for the small gauge wire when you're connecting up a lot of 22 and 24 gauge wire. It seems like you have to get it, you know, right under the head of the screw in order to hold properly. And it, it, I always felt like, you know, they're going to come loose over time. So um, even though I have a lot of these, um, I didn't really like using them. For the smaller gauge wires, I much prefer uh, this kind of distribution panel. And if you can. If you can find them, um, this panel here, it's a little bit different than, than this one in that it has an extra plate underneath the screw. And so the two plates actually sandwich the wire um, in between them and create a, a very firm bond. So um, you don't need necessarily need to use the additional um, connector uh, on the end of the wire. To get a good um, a good grip on the wire, so um, uh, my buddy John gave me this one. I'm not sure, and I didn't see them available at the um, sale electronics where I buy uh, most of my supplies. Um, but also, you can see everything under here is really well labeled as well. So this is turnout 351. I have each each turnout has a separate label on it. Um, the wire terminations, you know, this is going to be to block four reverse loop uh, from the frog juicer. 
um, so that when I hook up the rest of the layout to this uh, module, you know, I know where the uh, connections are going. Um, each terminal block has, um, you know, labels on it where where those wires are coming from. Um, what else? And there's another distribution block with the wires that are going to the next. These are all going to the next module, which will be, you know, connected on to here, and uh, to make the full 16 foot length. So um, now it's time to, you know, try mounting these um, in the final area where they're going to go. Okay, so now I've got this uh, first area installed. I've just uh, placed it on the, the frame and mounted it. Now this is just one section of four and I've already taken the wires from this section. Okay, all the harnesses that I had hooked up out in the garage and I've brought them up and connected them to this panel. These are uh, two big distribution blocks. Each one has 72 positions and um, I'm labeling all of the turnouts as I go along. Okay, so five wires from each turnout. And over here I've started uh, with some of the block sections down here. Okay, the other thing I've done in preparation uh, for the staging area is build this um, wall basically to support the staging area. Um, it's just studded from the uh, top of the uh, uh, runners, or I can't remember what you call those, floor supports. And basically built a uh, built a shelf on the wall. This is it going along here. I put the plywood in there to uh, support the backdrop. Because uh, it is flimsy, it's only one eighth inch hardboard. So between the studs, I thought uh, it would be too flimsy, so I put uh, some plywood backers. Okay, this is now section four, I guess, of the um, staging yard. Um, this is my return loop. I've done a uh, 48 inch, or sorry, 24 inch radius, which is 48 inches across uh, for this loop. Um, what I did was add uh, three inches, uh, sorry, 48, uh, yeah, it was about three inches. I added on to a uh, four by eight sheet. You can see in here, there's a little line. Um, that's the piece that I added on. Um, it came out a little more compact than I expected, so it, it's not taking up as much room. You see in the, in between the studs is where I bumped out the circle. Um, so that it didn't take up quite as much space and didn't stick out into the room as far. You can see there, all I lost was a little bit of uh, storage shelf there. And, uh, and then it bumps out into the middle of the room and I have my water softener underneath. So um, yeah, it's still quite functional. I can get in the middle of the circle and uh, fill my water softener quite comfortably. Comes out here. And this is, uh, so the two main lines uh, feed in on these two tracks here. Uh, that's track number five and six. And then off of the back of the loop, uh, I have four staging yards that uh, Y off of there. They Y and then they Y again. So you got the four tracks. And then they go down and behind the furnace and down there. So the um, two main tracks are Probably about 12 feet long. I haven't measured them yet, but uh, quite functional. And then let's go over to the other side and see how that looks. So here we are, back down at the business end of the staging yard, and it's sort of just a couple of background flats, just for temporary sake. 
Uh, this was one of the first engines that I ran through here. This little CNGP9. Now I'll show you some of the wiring panel that I've been working on. So I've fed all of the switches, um, all the block detection um, come into this one main panel here. This is going to be closed in the middle. Now I have up there at the top, that's uh, one switch eight from NCE. And down here at the bottom I have another switch eight which uh, is controlling the individual tortoises which I have, uh, have all numbered up here. So far I'm just using two wires on each uh, tortoise but I have wired in five wires to each one uh, just in case I want to use that for detection or something later on. Over here I have two AIU-01 panels uh, for detection but um, I'm not using those right now. And then down here at the bottom, we have, let's see, an on-guard reverser for the one reverse section of the upper loop. Um, one EB1 block, uh, just a circuit breaker for this uh, section, uh, the yard. Uh, I have a mini panel in there, which I have not hooked up yet. And some wire distribution, I have a couple BD20s. Uh, right here, these are block detectors as well, and another EB1 at the top there. So this is the staging area, pretty much uh, it's about 90% complete now. Um, so a few more things to do, I want to put the uh, another four tracks of staging, or more of a yard, here at the front, uh, you can see the lines on the bench work, fancy throttles, and um, yeah, that's about it. You can see in the return loop there, I have a 30 car train going through the staging area. It can um, go through and uh, it could do a double crossover and reverse back on itself, or it can just pass through and go through the uh, four staging tracks at the back which could be used for switching as well um, and then come out the front here and continue on going to have a little uh, engine shed at the back and it's going back out on the main there and I also have um, sort of a bypass here at the front um, so that you don't have to go through the loop at the back. You could just continue on on the main at the front there. Just show a little bit more of the train passing through the staging here. back out. Yeah, one beautiful thing I have uh, set up here is uh, with the NCE system um, and I've used uh, switch eights or one actually two switch eights on the board there. That's one switch eight there and one at the top as I mentioned. So all of the uh, tortoises are hooked up into this panel here and then through the switch aids so that uh, with a simple macro on here I can put push macro one enter and that aligns all of the switches at the front of my yard here for track number one okay and that starts at the back that's track number one at the back now if I Hit macro five. 
see that switches back and it's lined again for the main here at the front. Now I have uh, three tortoises controlling the double crossover. If I hit macro six, enter, it's gonna change all, all three of them or for all four tracks. Um, it's gonna switch them to the crossover mode. And if I hit macro, Five, that shoots them all back to, to straight again. So the Switch 8 has, is pretty powerful. Um, it uh, takes place of the uh, diode matrix. You know, to you know, one button will control all of the switches in the yard. And I plan to do a panel here at the front, and so that one button will you know one for track one, one for track two. Uh, just push the one button and it aligns everything for it. So that's my staging art to date and I hope uh, you picked up something good from this series of videos. Thanks for watching. And you see the engine popping out of the uh, return loop at the back of the staging area in a second. the furnace over the water heater and here's the back loop in action. <laughs>